Hello and welcome back once again to the Wrestling Rant. It's time for Monday Night Raw, the night after the terrible Battleground pay-per-view. Uh, July 21st, 2014 from Miami, Florida. And no, The Rock wasn't there. The show starts out with Justin Roberts introducing Triple H, who comes out, and starts cutting another one of his boring, long-winded promos. He insults the internet fans, uh, saying, uh, let's see, once again, what was it? Uh, right, he was, you know, saying... Uh, things didn't go so well for the Authority last night, and, you know, he could cry about it, but he's got options, you know, he's got options, he could, he shits on the internet fans by saying, I could go on Twitter and make some angry tweets and, you know, all this other shit. <sighs> Anyways... The whole point of this is Triple H is supposed to be announcing the opponent for John Cena at SummerSlam. Since uh, he couldn't lose last night, no. But yeah, Triple H is talking and running his dick liquor. And then Randy Orton's music hits and out he comes. Bitching and complaining, you know, Hunter, I'm still waiting on my one-on-one -on -one rematch with John Cena that I'm supposed to get, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Randy starts bitching about Kane not doing his job last night. And then Kane comes out, and Randy almost shit his pants when Kane's pyro went off. Kane comes out, and him and Randy go back and forth, bickering, blah, blah, blah. Reigns' music hits, and he comes out. And he starts talking, saying that, you know, I deserve to be the one to face Cena at SummerSlam. Believe that, and then he Superman punches Kane. Triple H bails, and Randy Orton kind of slides out of the ring, because he's all Viper-like and shit. And Triple H says, you know what, uh... You guys want to impress me, because that's what he was talking about. I want the whole roster to try and impress me tonight to see who should be the one to face Cena at SummerSlam. He says, you know what, if you three want to impress me tonight, you're going to be able to do it next, because I'm making a match. It's going to be Roman Reigns versus Kane and Randy Orton in a handicap match. And that match is going to be next. And they cut to a commercial break. So after the commercial break, the match has already started, and it turned out to be okay. Um, it boils down to Kane and Reigns. Kane gets thrown into the ringside steps on the outside, and they cut to another commercial. Uh, Reigns hits his apron jumping kick thing on Kane. And what happens is, oh yes, Randy's on the apron. Kane comes into the corner to tag Randy, but Randy backs away and he's like, nope, don't get, don't wanna. And so Kane grabs Randy by the throat, choking him, you know. And this gives Reigns the opportunity to come back. He charges and Superman punches Kane in the face, knocks him loopy. Randy backs off. Reigns hits the ropes and hits the spear on Kane for the 1-2-3. So Reigns wins the match. And Reigns is standing tall in the ring, and he's basically daring Randy to get in the ring. He's like, come on, Randy. And Randy's like, 
He's trying to grab up to the ropes to get on the apron, but he's like, nah, and he backs off like a bitch. End of that segment. We get hype for a segment. We get hype for a segment that was supposed to be Chris Jericho's highlight reel with his special guest, Bray Wyatt. And I'm thinking, oh yeah, that's not gonna fucking end well. Why the fuck would they even... Why the hell would Jericho even invite Bray on the highlight reel? Then again, you know, it's not like Jericho has a habit of doing this with his uh, feud opponents. But anyways, they hype that. And then they also hype... Um, following the recent trend of Nikki Bella being shit on by Stephanie McMahon... We also get hype for a four-on-one handicap match. Nikki versus Eva Marie, Rosa Mendez, Alicia Fox, and Cameron. And that's going to be up next. We cut backstage to see Stephanie with the four heel divas. And she's basically giving them a pep talk. Moving on, and they cut to commercial. Coming back, Alicia Fox's music hits, and she comes out with the other three heel divas to no reaction. And we get another recap from Payback of Bree slapping the piss out of Stephanie. They keep showing this. The Bella music hits, and out comes Nikki to a pop. And Nikki goes over by ringside over in the corner and hey there's Brie in the crowd apparently she's got a ticket she came to see the show and Nikki and Brie hug you know whatever and then Stephanie's music hits and she comes out and she's bitching to Brie and yada yada Nikki and or Brie ends up taking the mic away from Stephanie you know telling her that you're just a vindictive bitch, blah, blah. Stephanie slaps Brie. And I'm thinking, you could not possibly be this stupid woman. Within, within the context of the storyline, let's kayfabe for a minute, okay? Within the storyline, Brie quit. She is no longer an employee of the WWE. And Stephanie just struck her. Brie didn't hit her first. Yeah. This becomes the storyline of the show. We'll come back to this later. Of course, uh, the security takes Brie away, yada yada. And yeah, whatever. So we get the match between the four heel divas and Nikki Bella. Apparently, this is a tornado handicap match because none of them had to tag. They basically all ganged up on Nikki immediately, beat her down, and then Cameron holds Nikki. Nikki's standing but bent over. Cameron holds her bent over like that so Fox can hit the ropes and do her terrible botched scissors kick. I have it written down as the ass kick instead of axe kick. But her leg goes uh, goes across uh, yeah, Nikki's back. And of course, Fox covers Nikki. One, two, three. The heel divas win. Crowd's dead. And I think the heel divas throw Nikki out of the ring over by the, uh, the aisleway, the ramp. And Stephanie's still over there. And she says to Nikki... I'm going to make sure that you do the same thing uh, as your sister and you quit. She, you're going to quit too. Whatever. Uh. Anyways. They hype up our special guest star for the night, Flo Rida, who's going to be performing 
later on tonight. And they cut to commercial. Coming back from the commercial, we get a recap of what just happened, mainly the uh, Steph slapping Bree. Yeah, like I said, that becomes a, a night-long storyline. And you'll see where this is going later on. Cutting back live to the ring, Bo Dallas is finishing his entrance. And then, I think it was the Harlem Globetrotters music started playing. And Damian Sandow comes out in a LeBron James Miami Heat jersey. With the word Miami on the front crossed out in white tape, which started falling off during the match. Um, Sandow talks on his way to the ring. Who cares? Moving on. We get the match. Who the hell is going to win this one? Obviously not Sandow, because he hasn't won a match in months. Yeah, Sandow do goes for his uh, Kobito Akiet, uh, which he misses. Bo rolls out of the way. Sandow gets up, Bo grabs him by the head, bounces off the corner, hits the running Bo dog. One, two, three, Bo wins, and Bo goes for his victory lap, and the crowd's dead again. Then they started plugging Jericho's band Fozzy, which I'm actually a fan of. Um, yeah, they have a new album coming out, especially the one single. I don't remember what it was, but yeah. And of course, that's basically just a segue. They get more hype for the highlight reel segment, and they cut to a commercial break. Coming back from the commercial, the ring is set up for the highlight reel. You know, it's got the carpet down and the the TV hanging from the ceiling in the ring and shit. And the commentators are saying, during the commercial break, which you would have seen if you have the WWE app or the network, during the commercial break, Chris Jericho was attacked by the Wyatts. So we don't know what's going to happen here. We get the Wyatt cut, and the Wyatts get their entrance. They come out, and who cares? Yeah. Bray starts talking, running his dick liquor, and he segues into the clip during the commercial break of them attacking Jericho, beating the piss out of him. And it ends with Bray... Cinching Jericho up for the Sister Abigail. They're in a locker room, by the way. Apparently Jericho was in the middle of a interview when the Wyatts burst in the room and started beating his ass. Bray cinches him, uh, cinches him up for the Sister Abigail and plants Jericho face first up against the wall where they have, like, lockers where the guys hang their gear and that kind of shit. Bangs his head right up against the fucking wall. And then Bray just kind of slumps down, sits down... And he said, what was? Oh, yeah, he said, you know, eventually, Chris, they all fall down. Yeah, whatever. Cutting back into the ring, Bray does more talking. I don't give a fuck. Cut away gag, moving on to the next thing. And, oh, yeah, they actually cut backstage back into the same locker room. Jericho's being checked on by the doctors and some other people, and he's bleeding from his ear, or around his ear. So he's got a nice little trickle of blood coming down there. We cut backstage. There's Flo Rida getting ready for his dumb shit. God, this is stupid. Moving on. Cutting back to the arena. The Miz comes out. With the uh, Intercontinental title, of course, since he won it last night. And I... People can say whatever the fuck they want about The Miz. I don't care. I like The Miz. And I like this new Hollywood gimmick that they've given him. It's hilarious. Miz comes out in a white suit. Just the jacket and the pants. And you can see he's not wearing... He's, of course he has his gear on underneath. Because he's getting ready for a match. But he comes out in this white suit with the aviator shades on. He's got the belt. And he's just all smarmy and douchey and everything, and it's like, Jesus Christ. 
Apparently he didn't get a reaction. I don't know. I don't really remember, but whatever. Uh, after his entrance, we cut to commercial. Coming back from the commercial, we get a picture recap from the Battle Royal, the Intercontinental Title Battle Royal, from last night. And then... Dolph Ziggler's music hits, and he comes out to a big pop. And I had to make a note of this, his trunks. Ziggler has on new trunks. And the reason I noticed this is because during the match, I kept seeing it on the back. It says something, and I was, I was trying to figure out, like, what is it saying on his trunks? The trunks are black, and there's this, like, I think it was like an oval shape. And it said, D, uh, F, N, Z. Dolph fucking Ziggler, baby. That's hilarious. So anyways, we get the match between these two. And if you remember correctly, last night on the show when I was talking about the pay-per-view, I said I wanted to see this match after the way the Battle Royal ended. And I'm so glad that they did it. This match turned out to be pretty fucking good. So again, to all you Miz haters, this motherfucker put on a good match with Ziggler. Uh, start of the match, immediately there's a Let's Go Ziggler chant. And Miz basically stalls because I think what it was, it's... This whole gimmick he has, don't hit me in the face, the money maker, that shit. That was the story of this match. Because Ziggler's going for these moves trying to hit uh, Miz in the face... And Miz is, you know, jumping back all scared and shit, falling, tripping all over himself, trying to avoid it. And that actually plays into the finish, but we'll get to that. Uh, at the beginning, like I said, Miz stalls. He jumps out of the ring two, three times in a row, trying to avoid getting hit in the face. And after, like, the third time, Ziggler chases after him. Anyways, they get it back in the ring, finally. They start, you know, having the match, really the start of the match. Uh, Ziggler is able to do his repeating elbow drop spot. Uh, Miz got out of the way of the final one, rolled out of the ring. There's another Let's Go Ziggler chant. Okay, yeah. I had this written down as the apron to post to floor spot. Uh, both of them were on the apron. Well, let's see, it started like this. Ziggler was on the apron. Miz went to charge him, but Miz, or Ziggler ducked and tried to backdrop Miz out of the ring, you know, because of the Battle Royal last night. Uh, Miz lands on his feet on the apron, and they kind of fight back and forth. Uh, what ends up happening is... I think what it basically was, Ziggler went to charge Miz. Miz was backed up against, or backed up close to one of the corner posts. Uh, Ziggler went to charge, and I think Miz basically just flat-jacked him up, lifted him up, and basically dropped him face-first on the corner post, and the both of them fall to the floor. So, yeah, that looked kind of nasty. Uh, commercial break. Coming back from the break, immediately there's another Let's Go Ziggler chant. And later on, they do the chant again. Uh, Ziggler was in the corner, and Miz went for his corner clothesline spot, but Ziggler got out of the way. Uh, Miz hit the side effect. That was kind of interesting. Uh, Ziggler hits his big leaping DDT. Only gets a two count. Miz follows that up by... Okay, I'm gonna... Yeah. Miz follows up by doing his uh, snapping DDT that he does, uh, that he's been doing for God only knows how long. Uh, the one where he kicks him in the knee to get him down on their knees, grabs him and snaps back and plants him with the DDT. I'm going to call that Maurice Says Hello. Because for those of you who know, Miz is actually married to Maurice. And that was Maurice's finisher, that snapping DDT. So, yeah, I'm going to call that Maurice Says Hello. Um, okay. Ziggler went to hit the super kick. And I was like, yeah, I want to see it. And uh, Miz jumps back but grabs Ziggler by the foot, trips him, and goes into the figure four. 
after struggling for a bit, mi uh, Ziggler makes it to the ropes for the rope break. Uh, Ziggler's able to hit the Famasser, which again only gets a two count. And because of all the near falls and false finishes, the crowd starts chanting, This is awesome. I'm trying to... F oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I have written down here, great finish. Yada, yada. Um, trying to remember exactly what happened. Oh, right. Miz was on the ropes. And I'm looking at Ziggler like, don't go for the fucking zigzag. And of course he did. He goes for it. Miz flips him off because he's holding on to the ropes. Uh, Miz went for the figure four again, I think. Ziggler kicks him off, gets up, uh, went for the super kick again, Miz got out of the way and tried to go for the skull crushing finale, but uh, Ziggler ducks down and kind of flips Miz over his shoulder to throw him off. And as they both get up, Ziggler goes for the super kick again, and Ziggler turns around and covers his head because he's like, no, not in the face. He turns around and backs away. Ziggler just jumps up, grabs him, hits the fucking zigzag. Gets the cover. One, two, three. Ziggler wins. Unfortunately, the match was not for the title. But the commentators were saying, if Ziggler can win, he'll be in line for an Intercontinental title match down the road. But either way, Ziggler wins. Big pop from the crowd because they're like, oh my god, he actually won for once. Why the hell couldn't we have just gotten this last night? But anyways, Ziggler's kind of celebrating, but Miz goes over, grabs the, the Intercontinental title belt, and talks to Roberts, the ring announcer. And Roberts announces, but Miz is still the Intercontinental Champion. And then Miz's music plays. And I'm like, what the fuck? He didn't win the match. Why is this fucking music playing? I don't care if he's still the Intercontinental Champion. You didn't win the fucking match. Either way, trolling. Uh, we cut backstage to Triple H in the office talking with Seth Rollins. Yada, yada, yada. We need to get rid of Dean Ambrose. Blah, blah, blah. Rollins is talking. I want to be the one to take the title from Cena. Uh, and uh, Triple H is telling him, you don't need to do that, you have the money in the bank, uh, briefcase, yada yada yada. Anyways, up comes Cesaro, and he starts talking to him, saying, I'd like to be the one to take the title off of Cena for you, uh, yada yada yada. And Triple H says, if you want to impress me, we've been having a problem with uh, Dean Ambrose. If you can finish taking care of that problem, that would be very impressive. And Cesaro basically says, consider it done. And yeah, so apparently there's going to be a match between the two of them later on. And there is, and we'll get to that. We cut backstage to one of the hallways. There's AJ, I think, skipping through with her Divas title. And then, hey, there's Paige. And they go arm in arm, or they hold hands or whatever, and they start skipping together. And, yeah, they're getting ready for a tag team match, which is up next. So apparently they're still friends after, you know, the match last night. Um, yeah. Tag team match up next, and we cut to a commercial break. Coming back we get a recap of the Divas title match from the pay-per-view last night with AJ retaining. Paige's music hits and she comes out. And then AJ's music hits and she comes out. And while AJ's coming out, we notice that Natalia and Emma are both already in the ring. So they were already there before Paige and AJ even came out. So yeah. We get a tag team match between these four. And this actually turned out to be a decent match for once, instead of, instead of the usual train wreck. Immediately there's a CM Punk chant, of course. 
Uh, Emma locks in the tarantula, I think, on page. I'm not sure. Oh, right. Yeah, it was on page. Uh, Natalia comes in, and she manages to lock the sharpshooter in on Paige. But Paige is able to crawl to her corner and tag in AJ. AJ comes in, bounces off the ropes, and hits the fucking uh, Shining Wizard on Natalia to break up the move. And then she gets Natalia up and locks in the Black Widow on her. And Natalia taps out for the win. So Paige and AJ win. <laughs> After the match, AJ grabs the Divas title, skips around the ring, and Paige is in the ring clapping for her. And then AJ gets back in the ring, and the two of them hug for a minute. AJ goes to leave, she turns. Paige grabs her by the hair and just yanks her down and slams her on the mat. Yeah. Paige gets on stop of her, stops beating the shit out of her, throws her out of the fucking ring, goes out after her, grabs her, picks her up, throws her into the fucking barricade, picks her up again, throws her into the ring post, picks her up again, throws her over the fucking commentary table. <laughs> AJ is completely wiped out. Paige is screaming at AJ the whole time, This is my house! I told you! You know? So Paige, of course, is now heel. Which, fuck you, I don't buy that. You know what? AJ was the heel the day after WrestleMania. Paige debuted, trying to be nice, and AJ gave her a match, which Paige got lucky and won. And then AJ disappeared. And then AJ comes back doing the same shit that Paige did. She basically goaded Paige into a match, which is a heel tactic. Paige only agreed to it because the crowd wanted to see it. And AJ was able to get her own lucky win and win the title back. So honestly, I can sympathize with Paige being pissed off about that. So, again, retard WWE logic. They still think Paige is the heel here. Yeah, grabbing AJ by the hair, slamming her down, and kind of attacking her from behind was kind of cowardly. Don't give a fuck. Either way, they're going to uh, make Paige out to be the heel here. And then this was the funny part. After the beatdown that Paige lays on AJ, Paige starts skipping away from the ring like AJ does. So there's that. Moving on, uh, we get hype for Triple H's decision. Again, he's trying to decide who he wants to be the opponent for Cena at SummerSlam for the title. We also get more hype for Flo Rida's goddamn performance. And we cut to a commercial. <sighs> Coming back from the commercial, Fondango is finishing his entrance. And then Zack Ryder's music hits. And I'm already like, why is this piece of dog shit on Raw? He pauses at the stage and motions towards the uh, the curtain or whatever. And of course, out comes Summer and Layla. To Fandango's music. And they accompany Ryder down to the ring. Good God. Anyways, the match goes on. It starts going on, of course. And for most of the match, Johnny beats Ryder like a bitch. Beat him like a redheaded step. I mean, he was beating the fuck out of him. I'm not sure if Johnny wasn't stiffing him with them punches and shit. But he's beating the fuck out of him. Every time Ryder tried to mount some offense, Johnny would come back and counter and start beating the piss out of him again. 
Like, Johnny's looking pissed now. Ryder hits his Rough Rider out of nowhere, but they're over by the ropes. Ryder makes the cover, hooking the near leg. Johnny gets his other foot on the ropes, but Layla runs over and pushes the foot off the rope so the ref can't see it. And so Ryder wins. And the crowd was dead, of course. This match I had to give a what the fuck, because seriously, why the hell wasn't Ryder released about a month ago with all those other people you fired? Good Christ, you fired good talented people in that bunch, and you keep this piece of crap? Fuck off. Fuck right the hell off. Moving on. We get a recap of Stephanie and Brie Bella from earlier, the whole thing going on between them. Like I said, this is a the storyline of the night. We cut backstage to the interview area. There's Renee, and she's with Flo Rida. And this dipshit says that he would like to be the one to face John Cena for the title at SummerSlam. And I'm like, you fucking bitch. Anyways, Heath Slater comes up. And I'm like, oh god, this is only going to get worse. Yeah. Slater comes up and he starts talking. Apparently, I think, he, I think Slater said it was WrestleMania 28 was the one where Flo Rida performed during WrestleMania. And Slater says, you put your hands on me, so allow me to return the favor. And he shoves Flo Rida. And he's basically unaffected by it. He shoves the fuck out of Slater, puts him on his fucking ass. Knocks him out cold. Pretty much. And then they cut to a commercial break. Moving on, because if I continue talking about this, I'm probably going to have fucking aneurysm. We'll get to this maybe at the end of the show if I remember. But moving on. Coming back from the commercial break that they announced for tomorrow night on Main Event, we're going to see United States Champion Sheamus versus Rusev. Gray. Anyways... Cutting back to the ring, there's Stephanie, who introduces Flo Rida to do his performance. And he does his performance, and the crowd was dead throughout most of it. Uh, or at least I think so, because I had to change the channel, because I wasn't going to watch that bitch. We don't need musical performances on Raw. You could have had a fucking match. However, however... This actually leads to something. So for once, I'm going to let it slide. Just once. After the performance, we cut back to Stephanie who's still in the ring, and she says, "Let's have a, a let's let's hear it one more time for Flow Rider whatever," and she goes to leave the ring. She's stopped by like three guys in suits. And they start flashing badges. And I'm like, oh, you have to be kidding me. This is actually going to happen. <laughs> this, is, this is actually happening. <laughs> These guys start flashing badges. And they're talking to Stephanie about, do you know someone named Brie Bella? And she's like, yeah, and whatever. They start going through it. They're arresting Stephanie. <laughs> God, they read her her Miranda rights, and the crowd is like, yes, 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 and I'm like, fucking yes, and they even start chanting, na, 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 hey, hey, hey goodbye. <laughs> they cuff the bitch, and they start to take her away, and hey, there's Brie Bella over there from the Timekeeper area. 
because they were over there by the timekeeper area the whole time. And uh, yeah, the two of it kind of the two of them kind of lunge at each other, but the people hold them back and stuff. And they cuff Stephanie and they take her ass away. And it cuts backstage. They take her by Triple H, and she's bitching to him, and he's like, no, you know, whatever. He's bitching to the cops. They take her all the way out to the loading bay area where they put Stephanie in an unmarked cop car. They put her in the back seat and Triple H is talking to her through the window and yada yada and they fucking drive away. <laughs> and they got to a commercial break. And of course after the break they have to recap what just happened like we fucking missed it. Assholes. I swear to God. They think we're stupid having to recap everything. We cut over to the office again where there's Triple H freaking out. He's on the phone talking with somebody, whatever the fuck. And up comes Joey Mercury, who's like, uh, sir, you know, like... Yeah, Triple H is getting ready to, uh, or no, Triple H wasn't on the phone. He's like getting papers up. He's getting like a briefcase. He's getting ready to go down to the... The, the cop station to fucking help Stephanie get out. And and Mercury comes up and he's like, um, you know, I hate to ask you this right now, but like, uh, what's your decision on Cena's opponent for SummerSlam? And Triple H is like, really? Family comes first and all this shit, yada, yada, yada. And they, they get to talking, and he's like, he, he asks Mercury, he's like, it takes, a, it takes a little while for them to uh, put her through the processing at the precinct, right? And Mercury's like, yeah. And so Hunter's like, I guess I got a little time then. Tell them I'll be right out with my decision, but then after that I gotta go. Which, by the way, that's... He doesn't get to it right away. He just, uh whatever moving on we cut back to the ring there's Rybaxel jobber entrance and then Big E's music hits and he comes out and then Kofi comes out so yeah Big E and Kofi are friends and so yeah and they're gonna take on Rybaxel we get the match between these two teams I didn't fucking care I wasn't paying attention Ryback I think got a roll-up win on Big E. Either way, Rybaxel wins. They get the fuck out of there. Big E and Kofi are left standing in the ring like, what the fuck just happened? And then up comes Xavier Woods popping out of nowhere. And he's wearing a white suit too. And I'm like, what the fuck? Where did he come from? And uh, he starts talking to Big E and Kofi. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. This is what I've been waiting for, man. <laughs> He's talking to Big E and Kofi, and he's saying, you know, we've been getting beat up for too long now. It's, it's, it's time for us to stop taking orders and start taking what's ours, you know. And Big E, look at, Big e and Kofi look at him, and they're like, yeah, okay. And basically, so yeah, we have the formation of a new stable here. The new nation of domination. <laughs> Now just add in our truth and somebody else. I don't know. Um, anyways, we cut backstage. There's Triple H in the office again. He's talking with somebody on the phone. The commentators are talking over it. Whatever the fuck. We cut to commercial break. Ooh, clang. Ooh, shit. Uh, coming back from the commercial break, um, fuck, where the fuck was I? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, cutting back from the commercial break, we get a recap from earlier, the Wyatts attacking Jericho. Don't know why, it doesn't lead to anything. Cutting back live into the arena, Justin Roberts introduces Rusev and Lana, who come out to no reaction. Back in the ring, Lana starts talking, or she tries to start talking, but she's interrupted almost immediately by the Great Khali's music. 
and he hobbles his giant rickety ass down to the ring. And I'm just like, oh, good Christ, this match is going to suck. And guess what? It did. Guess who won? The finish of the match, Rusev hits his super kick thing and then locks the accolade in on Kali, and Kali eventually taps out. Crowd's dead, don't give a fuck. The stupid flag explodes down from the rafters, moving on. We cut back to the weird, black, light-filled room, of course, with Stardust and Gold Dust. They're talking another promo. They're talking about some cosmic key, and they were talking about this last night at the pay-per-view, but they're talking about some cosmic key. We need the cosmic key, but they have it. And we need to go and get it, and they will not forget the names of Gold Dust and Stardust. <laughs> this is some of the goofiest shit, but at least they're going for the gimmick, and at least it's something interesting. I don't know, it's kind of getting old. They need to hurry the fuck up with this shit, but whatever. Cutting back to the uh, arena, Ambrose's music hits, and he comes out to a nice pop. And uh, his shoulder is still taped up. It was taped up all last night, so... Um, yeah, but for some strange reason, after his entrance... They cut to a commercial. Coming back from the commercial, we get another recap of Stephanie slapping Brie from earlier and then her being arrested. And we cut backstage to Renee Young, who says that she has an update on the situation. Stephanie has been taken to the police station and she's being charged with battery of Brie Bella and also possibly resisting arrest. Oh god, it's fucking great. Of course we know where this is going. Stephanie's gonna reinstate Brie just so she can try and get her revenge. And it'll all probably tie in with uh, Daniel Bryan's return as well. I don't know or care. I don't care about Nikki and Stephanie. I can't wait for Brian to come back. Anyways, cutting back to the ring, Cesaro's already in the ring, and the match between him and Ambrose starts. And again, we get another good match, because again, these two guys can both fucking work. Immediately, there's a Let's Go Ambrose chant. And we cut backstage to see Triple H, Randy, and Seth watching the match backstage... Uh, like the interview area. I'm not sure. It might have been the office. I don't know. But whatever. Ambrose is just teeing off on, on Cesaro for the most part of this match. Um, Cesaro gets thrown to the outside of the ring. And Ambrose goes to do like a slingshot splash out of the ring. But Cesaro catches him by hitting the uppercut as Ambrose came down. After that, they cut to a commercial. Coming back, Dean comes off the top rope with a big front missile drop kick like Daniel Bryan. Uh, let's go Ambrose chant again. Ambrose does his suicide dive to Cesaro on the outside. Uh, back in the ring, Ambrose does his teeter-totter clothesline thing. Which Cesaro answers back with his own running clothesline and... With both of them, they're both, the commentators are talking, damn, uh, JBL, which one of those was more like your old clothesline from hell? And I'm thinking, probably Cesaro's, since both of them were running, and good God did he fucking hit hard with that shit. It was great. Um, Cesaro puts Ambrose in the Tree of Woe, and he's, you know, teeing off on him, the referee's having to back him up. Either way, Ambrose gets out of it, and as... Cesaro charges him. He, Ambrose blocks him, grabs Cesaro, rams him into the post through the uh, the corner thing. He does it once, does it twice, does it a third time. 
And so he's now rammed Cesaro's shoulder into the post three fucking times because Cesaro was working Ambrose's hurt shoulder the whole match. Anyways, Cesaro's still draped in the corner with his arm kind of wrapped around the post. Ambrose gets out of the ring, gets a chair, and whacks Ambrose or, uh, Cesaro's fucking arm with the chair. So, of course, DQ. Ambrose starts flipping out. I think he may have hit Cesaro another time or two with the chair in the ring. But either way, Ambrose's music starts playing. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, great, because I love Ambrose, man. This fucking crazy, unhinged, I'm gonna come after you if it's the last thing I ever do, is great. Uh, anyways, we cut backstage. There's Renee Young outside of the office, I guess. Triple H comes out, and Renee tries to ask him, uh... I think Triple H interrupts her and he says, I'm going out to the ring uh, right now to do, uh, to, to announce Cena's opponent, okay? And he goes to leave and Renee says, but shouldn't you be with your wife right now? And Trip just kind of stares at her and he's like, bitch, well, he doesn't say anything, but he's just staring at her and you can tell he's like, bitch, no. And so she's just, okay, fine. <laughs> Moving on, uh, we cut to commercial break. And coming back from the break, they announce for SmackDown this Friday, or this Tuesday, um, Roman Reigns versus Alberto Del Rio. Gee, I wonder who's winning that one. Moving on, cutting back live, Triple H is in the ring already, and he says, I'd like to introduce John Cena's opponent for SummerSlam for the WWE World Heavyweight title. And he motions up to the stage. Randy Orton's music hits, and he comes out. To no reaction again. And I'm like, seriously? Anyways, as Randy gets down to the ring... Roman Reigns comes from out of nowhere and starts beating the shit out of him. <laughs> Roman chucks his ass into the crowd. They start fighting up through the crowd and up towards the stage. They go out underneath the uh, the panels on the side. They're gone. And Triple H is like, what the fuck? The crowd starts chanting, we want Lesnar. Paul Heyman kind of uh, comes out from the curtain, and he's like, uh, "You know, Mr. Triple H, sir, I uh, you know have the utmost respect for you, but it looks like your Plan A and your Plan B aren't really working for you. So how about I introduce to you Plan C?" And he gestures over towards the curtain, of course. Lesnar's music hits, and he comes out. And Heyman comes down with them, and the two of them circle around the ring, and they get in the ring. And they're just kind of staring at each other, the three of them, those two, and Triple H. And Triple H shakes Heyman's hand, and he shakes Brock's hand. So that basically makes it official, I guess. Triple H gets the fuck out of here. Of course, he's going to go look after Stephanie. Heyman starts talking. And he goes through his usual shtick, my name is Paul Heyman, blah, blah, blah. And then things get a little interesting. He says, my client Brock Lesnar recognizes the divide in the WWE Universe. The half that wear their green t-shirts and their wristbands and their ball caps and believe in John Cena. And the other half... Uh, well, he said, with the first half, the kids, that chant, Let's go, Cena! And then he says, the other half of the crowd, that uh, don't have to have their mommy tell them when it's bedtime, and they will chant with vigor and whatever, Cena sucks, you know? I hate Brock. But I will give Heyman credit. That motherfucker still rocks it on the mic. 
Ah. He segues into showing what happened the last time somebody tried to mess with Brock Lesnar. And of course, that's clips from the streak match at WrestleMania 30. And Brock winning, of course. Heyman continues talking, yada, yada, yada. He basically says that, you know, most uh, big monster heels or whatever would come to Cena and say, you can avoid this beating if you just leave the WWE titles at my feet and get the fuck out of here. But my client, Brock Lesnar, there is no escaping this beating. You will not get any chance to run away and forfeit. Brock's going to destroy you, this and that. And he finishes by doing his own version of the Pledge of Allegiance, pledging his allegiance to Brock and one C Nation under John Cena, now divisible. I can't remember all of it, but you know, it was actually kind of funny. And Brock is just standing there looking like a lunkhead this whole time. With his caveman mongoloid face. God. So yeah, it's pretty much set. Brock's going to face Cena at SummerSlam for the title. And Brock will most likely win. Now that's the end of the show, by the way. So yeah, that was it. Um, I guess I'm, I'm trying to get this moving along. Um, but yeah. Let's go over the matches one more time like we usually do. Roman Reigns defeats Randy Orton and Kane in an okay handicap match. He hit Kane with the spear for the 1-2-3 after some more dissension in between Orton and Kane. Um, then we got Nikki Bella being defeated, of course, by the four heel divas after Alicia Fox's ass kick. Bo Dallas defeating Damian Sandow with the Bow Dog. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler defeating The Miz in a pretty damn good match. Oh, man. This was good, and I hope to see Ziggler and Miz go at it again, hopefully at a pay-per-view for the title, and hopefully Ziggler will win, for God's sake. Ah. After that, we got Paige and AJ defeating Natalia and Emma. AJ gets the tap-out victory with the Black Widow on Natalia, And, of course, that would lead to Paige turning heel on AJ. Moving on, Zack Ryder defeats Fandango with Summer and Layla's help. Because otherwise, Fandango would have beat the piss out of him. Seriously, I want to see Fandango freak out. He needs to freak out. I'm not Fandango anymore, goddammit. I'm Johnny Curtis. I don't give a fuck about Summer or Layla anymore. Your shit is not going to fucking affect me anymore. Anybody you come out with from now on is getting destroyed. Period. And Johnny just starts beating the piss out of people. I want to see it. First week, Ryder. I'm going to beat your ass to a bloody pulp, you punk bitch. And then, fucking... Whatever. Moving on. Uh, Rybaxel defeats Big E and Kofi in a boring, I don't care match. Only to lead to Xavier Woods talking to Big E and Kofi about forming some faction, which they apparently agreed to. Cool new nation of domination, I'm in. Uh, Rusev defeats the great Kali in a shitty match, of course. And then, in what was the main event match, apparently, Cesaro defeats Dean Ambrose by disqualification because Dean got himself DQ'd using a chair to blast fucking Cesaro. But Ambrose comes out looking like a beast, which is cool. 
and the show ends with Brock standing there looking like a tool while Heyman cuts a good promo, I guess. Cena and Lesnar at SummerSlam, here we come. That was Raw, Monday night, July 21st, 2014 from Miami, Florida. Triple H, go fuck yourself, you scumbag, I hate your guts. Stephanie too. I hope you rot in jail, you bitch. Big Bertha's gonna have your ass by the end of the night, honey. Uh, like I said, that was Raw. Thank you for watching this episode of The Wrestling Rant. Uh, I have Wednesday off this week, so I should be able to use that to do the episode for the SmackDown spoilers. I'm not sure, though. I need to get my car in for some stuff, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, should be Wednesday. Join us for the next episode, whenever it is, for the SmackDown spoilers. And no, I'm not going to go over the stupid shit with Flo Rida and Heath Slater. I don't care. I don't care. Fuck them both. Like I said, that's the end of the show. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, join us next time for the next episode, and we will see you then.